America here and today I'm here with my March wrap up. First of all, a couple of things to all of you who are new subscribers to my channel, welcome. I got uh, quite a handful of shout outs from other lovely booktubers over the last few weeks and they have brought some new people my way. So hello, I'm Erica. And um, second announcement is that I am participating in VEDA. <laughs> Um, once again, this will be my third time doing kind of a video a month every day during a month. I did it last April, and then I did it this past October. Um, I've already missed a day because today's the 4th. I did not get a video up yesterday on the 3rd. That's going to happen a few times this month, um, just because sometimes I'm at work from 9 a.m. until midnight, and if I haven't filmed or edited something, there's no time in that day to do that. So, uh, I will try my best, though. I have lots of really cool video ideas for this month and I'm very excited to share them with you all. Uh, without further ado, I read a bunch of things in March, so let's get started. Right at the beginning of the March, there was the Underhyped Reads Readathon. I put up a TBR video for this, but I never did a wrap-up video just because I didn't have a lot to say and I was also really busy. So I got super slammed that week. I didn't get nearly as much reading done as I wanted to, but I did manage to finish three books. I read Don't Let Me Be Lonely by Claudia Rankin. This is a collection of prose, prose poetry. Um, you may have heard of Claudia Rankin's collection Citizen, which got a lot of hype last year and is absolutely amazing. Uh, this is kind of um, along similar veins. Her prose poetry is very focused on um, politics in the U.S., especially how political situations affect the black community, and I very much enjoyed this. I believe I gave it three and a half stars. I read the second book of Preacher. Um, by Garth Ennis and Steve Dillon, and I don't want to talk about this too much here because I'll talk about it in my next comics wrap-up, but I believe I gave this three stars overall. And I read this adorable little novella, this is Speakeasy by Catherine M. Valente. Um, this novella was just published last October or November, I believe, and it's a, it was a limited release, so I have a signed copy, and my edition is numbered, and sorry, my white balance is just not having it today. Um, but this is kind of a fantasy take on Jazz Age New York. It's also a retelling of kind of the Zelda and Scott Fitzgerald story. Um, really, really fascinating. It's a tiny little thing. I highly recommend it. It was such a delightful read. I gave it four stars. So that's all I finished for the Underhypes Read Readathon, but I also finished quite a few more things during the month. I read Ernest Hemingway's The Last Interview. The Last Interview is a series of books published by Melville House, and they take famous authors and they publish the last interview they ever gave, as well as an assortment of other interviews they gave throughout their lifetime. So this book has four interviews with Hemingway in it, most of them during his Cuba years, and it was quite delightful. I'm a pretty big Hemingway fan, so I very much enjoyed kind of getting some more insight into his life. Throughout the month, I finished my re-read, my re-listen of the Harry Potter audiobooks. So I've been listening to those on audiobook for the first time over the last few months. And this month, I managed to listen to books 5, 6, and 7. So I listened to Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix, Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince, and Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. They're all fantastic. I love the audiobooks. I'm really shocked at how fast I flew through these three because they're so huge, but I was just like in an audiobook groove this month. So that was really fun. Also this month I read The Girl Who Raced Fairyland All the Way Home. This was just published on the 1st of March and it is the fifth and final book in Catherine M. Valente's Fairyland series. I absolutely adored it. It was amazing. I gave it five stars. I really want to go back and read the whole series from start to finish again, but I have other obligations so I can't right now, but I'm going to soon. Um, absolutely adore this series. If you have not picked it up yet, I highly recommend you do so. I may, if people are interested, do a spoiler-free review of the whole series. I reviewed the fourth book, um, but I read the first three books before I started this channel, so I haven't really talked about them that much. But if you're interested in hearing more about the series, let me know down below and I'll definitely get that arranged. Um, yeah, um, so incredible. So, so wonderful. I read a couple of books this month for the BookTube SFF Awards. I read Binti by Nnedi Okorafor. Binti is a novella by Nnedi Okorafor, and it's a very kind of intense but short glimpse into the life of a girl named Binti who is being sent from her home planet of Earth to go study at 
a at like the most prestigious university in the universe the sci-fi story fyi um and kind of what happens on her journey there i really enjoyed this i think i gave it three or four stars probably deserves four stars because it hasn't really left me alone since then there's some really interesting themes about kind of sticking to your culture and what your roots mean to you um and just understanding differences between cultures and things like that. I think Nadia Korafor did a great job with this little novella and it packed quite the punch for me. I also read Uprooted by Naomi Novik. I'm probably going to do a full review on this because I have some things to say. First of all, I did not hate this as much as I thought I was going to. A lot of booktubers that I love and respect and that are friends of mine read this and hated it when it first came out. Um, I did not hate it. I enjoyed it. I gave it three stars. I had some issues with it, but it was not terrible. I am a little bit sad that I didn't hold out and buy the really pretty UK cover, but this one's not bad, right? Right? It's just not as pretty. Anyway, that's what happens when you live in the US. You get subpar book covers. I also finished reading The Bluest Eye this month by Toni Morrison. I started this in February, like early in February, and it took me forever to read. And it's only like 200 pages. <laughs> Um, what happened was I picked it up. I read like the first 50 pages in one sitting. I absolutely fell in love with it. It was beautiful. It's really, really intense though. Um, this is the story basically of the Cola breed love and it's told through multiple perspectives, but it's, um, it kind of, I don't know how to describe it without giving anything away, but it's about kind of the tragedies in her life as a young girl. Um, I know a lot of people have already read this, but I really don't want to spoil it because it's completely beautiful. And I loved it. I gave it four stars, though. And this is the first Toni Morrison book that I've not given five stars to, and I really think it's just due to the fact that I put it down for, like, three weeks. And then when I picked it back up, I just wasn't as enamored with it as I had been in the first place. So I would like to reread this sometime in the future, for sure. I definitely would like to revisit it. But it's incredible. You you should read it. It's amazing. Toni Morrison is a goddess. You know. And lastly, I read two memoirs this month. I read Lit by Mary Carr. This is um, one of Mary Carr's memoirs. She has quite a handful of them. And this is about her... Um, kind of battle with alcoholism. It's kind of written as <clears throat> a letter to her son and kind of talks about her life as a young adult mostly and a young mother um, and how she came to grips with her alcoholism and how she handled it. It was really beautifully done. I highly recommend it. I can't wait to read some of her other memoirs as well. I like her writing style and I love these Harper Olive editions. They're so cute. I don't know if you can see the gold stars on that, but they're gold and they're shiny. And lastly, I read The Argonauts by Maggie Nelson. I have been looking forward to reading this book since it was published, and I kept picking it up and putting it down, picking it up and putting it down, and I wouldn't commit to buying it because I don't know why. And so I finally bought it. It just was released in paperback. Um, this is a memoir, sort of a memoir, sort of part cultural studies. It's a really fascinating book and it's um, structured in a really unique way. There's no like chapter breaks or anything. Um, it just goes from one thought to the next and she kind of segues from talking about um, gender issues and being a mother and just it, it's really poignant and it's really important in this day and age. Um, I read this at the perfect time because I live in North Carolina, and if you know anything about what's going on in North Carolina politics right now, you know that getting involved and educating yourself on trans rights is very important. Anyway, I don't want to go on a political tangent, but <laughs> um, The Earn Outs by Maggie Nelson, absolutely fantastic. She is, her um, husband is transgender, and she just writes so beautifully about their life together, and I loved this book. So, those are all the things I read in March. As for what I'm currently reading, I just finished a couple days ago, but I'm going to include it in my April wrap-up. Um, the Nest by Cynthia Dupree Sweeney. 
I will talk about this later. I might do a full review on it. And I'm currently about 150 pages into Illuminae. Um, this is written by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. This is for the BookTube SFF Awards. It's a science fiction story and it is young adult. Um, I don't read a lot of young adult. We're going to see how this goes. <laughs> um, I'm enjoying it so far. It's told in a really cool way. So the structure of it's kind of weird. It's told through, it's kind of like a case file. So there are interviews and like email snippets and instant messaging conversations and things. Um, it's interesting and it seems to be quite intriguing and action packed, but I, I'm not real sure about it yet. Anyway, I like this cover though. Look, it's pretty. Look at this. Watch. Watch. When you taste, take the dust jacket off, it looks like that. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So, you know, there's that. That's good. So that is all I have to say today. Please let me know if you had any favorite books that you read in March that you think I should check out, or if you would like to discuss any of the books I read this last month in further detail, we can do that too down below in the comments. I will be back tomorrow. Bye!